Welcome to the 35th Documentary Film Festival Munich, DocFest Munich 2020. This year at DocFest Munich at Home, the online edition of our festival. My name is Isabel Fontou. I'm a programmer and a writer for the DocFest team. And I'm very proud to present the film Queen Lear by Turkish filmmaker Pelin Esmer which runs in the Doc Panorama section at DocFest this year. It's a Turkish production. But before we do the talk, I'm very happy we can have a talk now. But before we do the talk, I'd like to tell you about the Audience Award, which is donated by BR and Reisat, the Kino Kino Audience Award. So if you like the film, please vote on the film program site. This is really important. You can vote for as many films as you want. Every film you liked, you can vote for the Audience Award. And now I'm very happy to welcome Pelin Esma and her film Queen Lear. Welcome, Pelin. Hello. Hi. Hello. Good to see you. Yeah, the same here. <laughs> Even though digitally. <laughs> yes, but, um, yes, it's a pity, but it's, it's a great thing we can do this. So yeah. maybe... Could you tell us where you are at the moment? I'm in Istanbul at my house at the moment. And uh, we are locked down, as many of you in the world. I think in Germany, you're, you're not that locked down. But uh, here we, uh, especially on the weekends, uh, we are not allowed to go out uh, now as well. Uh, well, it's it's not a good situation as no. many places, and it's very sad and stressful. And uh, hoping that it will uh, finish soon. And how does it affect your work? Are you able to work at the moment? So so. I mean, it's uh, trying to stay alive. <laughs> And keeping uh, people healthy around you is uh, more important than anything at the moment. Yes, that's true. And so housework and uh, survival mm -hmm. is, um, is the basic uh, activity of the day. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but to work, I do a little bit. I'm, I, I've been, I started to write a script. It was before the virus. I started a, a fiction again. You know, I do both documentary and fiction. And uh, after Queen Lear, I'm working on a fiction again. But of course, it's going uh, slow and uh, sometimes because it's very easy to lose your uh, motivation or energy, obviously. So slowly. So it's, it's a strange situation. And are you able to leave the house at the moment in the lockdown? Uh, no, not now. I cannot. Uh, on Monday we can. Uh, but even if uh, we can, I, the ones who have the luxury to stay and work at home, uh, we try to do it as little as possible, really. I mean, just for very basic needs to buy food and then come back home. Okay. And, uh, so I haven't seen my friends for a long time now. <laughs> And even my family. Yes, it's a strange and difficult situation at the moment. And we're really lucky you, you finished your film um, in time. And so we can show the film and, yes. and get yeah. good vibes um, with this brave, um, cheerful woman in your film. I like yeah. it very much. And the first thing I wanted to ask you is, um, I think destiny is an important theme for the women in your film. What does destiny mean for the women in your film? Mm -hmm. Well, destiny is something they are constantly questioning and discussing in life, like we all do, you know. How much of it, uh, what we live, we call destiny, and uh, what we don't call destiny is a big issue. Our ability uh, to change and our disability to change some other things, and this is one of the biggest questions uh, uh, humanity has been dealing uh, and will be dealing. Yes. So, uh, my woman protagonist in the film, and it came out, this discussion of destiny came out uh, very naturally, uh, because uh, as you can see in the film, it came out 
uh, when we were traveling to a very, very remote village on very dangerous roads. So we were that close to death, actually. <laughs> so when you're that close to death, uh, the issue, the, the subject of destiny comes obviously naturally. <laughs> so our minibus that we were traveling in was filled uh, with that subject. And we start, they started to discuss what is destiny, what we can change and what we cannot change. And uh, they did change. Uh, very important things actually. Uh, so uh, some people may know my previous film with them was called The Play, which mm -hmm. I did in 2005. And in those that year, uh, there, it was new, this theater uh, they created was new. And uh, since then, they could change uh, some things. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, playing theater means for them the abil ability to change things. I've got, I got the impression when I watched your films. Yes, into, uh, the change is mostly internally. I mean, uh, like feeling uh, more self-esteem, feeling better and, uh, and having some hope <laughs> when you need it, you know. Uh, but uh, This, these are the biggest uh, and most important changes they experience. Yes, I've got, I've got the impression they, uh, they um, can take their own decisions. They feel empowered by playing theater. And this is really fascinating. And yes, yeah, yes in, sometimes they do, sometimes they can't, like many of us. Uh, of but uh, as you can see, how they feel and, uh, has changed. And mm -hmm. this is not an easy thing, you know? Yes. So theater has been an incredible uh, tool that they discovered themselves. So th this was shown mostly in the, the play where uh, they discovered, because nobody tells them to make theater. This would be, uh, I think, ridiculous to go to tell them, oh, why don't you make theater? It will be good for you. No, they discovered it themselves as a tool that will do good to them. Yes. This is the strongest part of it, you know? Yes. And, uh, and they stick to it. And uh, they still act uh, as much as they can, you know? And who decided that it would be um, King Lear as a play this time? What, what, who decided it was, this? It was my suggestion. Oh, really? And uh, they adapted it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I said they were acting another uh, play, uh, some local plays they were acting. And I also shot those, of course. Uh, some plays that, that would, they think that it would fit to the villages they go, that the villagers would be interested more about their daily lives and things like that. And uh, I, in the second half of the shooting, I asked their director, Ahmed, who is in the film, uh, I said, how about adding another play, you know, which is more um, universal? I mean, uh, that is timeless, that is borderless, you know? And I, let's say Shakespeare, I said. Mm -hmm. And he said, why not? I adapted King Lear before with another group and those ladies would perfectly do it. I mm -hmm. said, I'm sure. So it was during the shooting process that you decided? That yes, during the shooting process, uh, it was, a little suggestion from me and they, they took it very uh, nicely and they they totally uh, converted to their own uh, interpretation yes. because the director the point was not to stage a King Lear of course it's not an adaptation of a King Lear the point is uh, to feel how Shakespeare's words you know uh, are still alive yes and will be you know It doesn't matter if it's in a remote village of Turkey or uh, in England or Nigeria, whatever. And no. this is strong art, you know, that is timeless and so yes, timeless. locationless, you know. Uh -huh, absolutely. And why is it so difficult to get the permission um, for acting in the villi distant villages? They have difficulties. In some, in some of them, yes, they had, of course, for political reasons in some of them. Uh, but they could, uh, I mean, because uh, they are, uh, some of them, uh, they are, uh, 
were more conservative than the others. Mm -hmm. So they wouldn't know what kind of effect, what kind of play, how would people react, you know? And uh, they, some of them didn't want to take risks even, you know? Uh, and, uh, but this group, I mean, also thanks to Hussein, who is the leader of, the, uh, of this project, and they insisted, okay, they cannot decide if we go or not, and uh, they go. Mm -hmm. And um, the people, the villagers, there were uh, some villagers that they greeted us, you know, incredibly, you know, mm -hmm. from the beginning. There were some which were hesitant at the beginning, yes. they were used to, they have never seen such a thing, you know, and who is that, you know, and if, if the leader of the uh, village is not supporting this idea, they should hold back. But because we went to these villages early, and this was part of the uh, thing, mm -hmm. so we could have time to spend, to spend with those people there. And those ladies showed themselves as examples. Look, I'm like you, you know? Yes. Let's, have, let's make the cup together. That's my job too, you know? So we understand each other. And if I can act, you can act too. Mm -hmm. Let's yes. do this work together and then come with me uh, to the schoolyard. You, you come and watch me tonight. Yes. So those people, slowly they gather and every night, it was more than 300 people. Really? And yes. how long did you stay at, at, in one place then? It was, uh, it was, they were all daily trips. Mm -hmm. So we were arriving and they were, as you could see the roads, quite mm -hmm. long and difficult roads to mm -hmm. travel. So every day we were traveling like two, three hours or something to reach. And then uh, we would be there uh, during the afternoon and we would spend three, four hours together with the villagers. And at night we would perform, and after the play, we could stay a little bit more and then go back at night, uh, midnight or something. Okay, so, so you drove back every night every home night. to their villages, to their village? Sometimes to their own village, because those villages are, uh, some of them are far, but some of them are not that far to their village. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they stayed at home. But mostly uh, we stayed in other uh, center places, which is closer to those villages, because some of them were like two, three hours away, uh, okay. impossible to go back home. Okay. So we were staying in some pensions sometimes, and which was also fun. You know? Of course. And the, I asked myself the encounter with the nomads in the, at, the, at the end of the film. Was it an idea you had on, on your own because you you it was important to maybe um, create an encounter with the past for mm. the women or why why is I think yeah. they are really important in the film? It it was it was really important. That's true. And it, and at initially it was not in the list that they made. They were they picked up thirty villages and their criteria was maximum eight uh, hundred inhabitants and uh, as remote as possible, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but these nomads was not in the, in the list at the beginning, but then Hussein said, well, it should have been. And one of the villages, we had to cancel it because there, uh, somebody died. And when somebody died, we couldn't go and uh, make an entertainment. So uh, one of them was canceled. Mm -hmm. So instead of that, we immediately uh, replaced it with these nomads. Uh, which, of course, uh, helped me a lot uh, also to, to connect them to the past, especially uh, with one of the protagonists who herself was this little girl, actually, yeah. in the past. It was very touching to see her with the little girl and yeah. feel that this was her life, her former life, she encounters in this moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. And and maybe you can explain where where is it in Turkey? Where where does it does this happen? Because we don't we don't know that we don't have an idea. Uh, this no. is in the uh, southeast part of Turkey. Uh, these are villages around Mersin uh, and Anamur. Okay. Uh, Mersin is one of our big cities in the southeast of Turkey, close to Adana. Maybe some people might have heard of Adana. It's one hour away from Adana. And those, those women are from uh, a village of Mersin called Aslanköy. 
Mm -hmm. and, and those villages you see in the film are villages around Mersin and another town called Anamur. So it's in the southeast part of uh, Turkey. Okay. Okay, now I can imagine. Mm -hmm. And how was it to meet them again? Because you made your first great. film now. Yeah, great. It was... Uh, we were uh, partly in touch, of course, in those 14 years. Uh, when we made the film, uh, the play, we, we could see each other more, of course, because we were traveling sometimes to festivals. But then um, life continued and, and I moved on to fiction and I did uh, three fiction films in between and their life continued. Uh, some of them got jobs, they got grandchildren and <laughs> we were talking on the phone uh, once a while. So our connection was not totally cut. And, uh, but we didn't see each other for a long time. And when I heard that, uh, that project from Hussein, um, it was 2017. Uh, on a he told me, told me that he has a project like that. And at that moment, he was, the, uh, he was working in the state municipality for theater and cinema. And in the play, he was the school teacher. So, Things changed and, uh, and some things didn't. So he told me about this wonderful project that he picked up 30 remote villages and they're going to make a tournée with some of those women from my film together with the state theater actors. And he called me to get permission to show the film, the play in the villages, you know, for the rights. And when I heard it, I said, forget about the rice. It's all yours, but please let me in. Let me be with you in this tour as well. So he uh, very kindly uh, included me and my very small team. We were only three, uh, the cameraman, uh, the sound man, me. Uh, so the, he included us on the project and we had to be very fast because they already planned it. And uh, when I heard about this, it was maybe three weeks before really? everything would start yes so i had to be very fast just like i was in the play you know this is this is about uh, sometimes a documentary you have to do that you know Absolutely. because life doesn't wait for you you know no. you just have to be there and so uh, i had to gather some whatever i can you know and um, with some personal even bank credits you know <laughs> because i had to do that you know and it was, it gave me incredible um, light, you know, I, I could see a light and I thought it could give me some hope and the others if I make it. Mm -hmm. So we had to be very fast and we, we joined them in the tour. And how long did the tour t um, last then? One month. One month, okay. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> and are they planning another play at the moment? You yeah, they, they always want to, but at the moment it's not very easy. I mean, the virus is on top of everything. Of course, we are all isolated and everything. Uh, but they were planning to make something else uh, in summer. Um, because some of them live in, in the city now, some of them in the village. So uh, it's not easy to gather always. But uh, they, they do want to prepare a new place and continue. I hope this summer, we, will, if we get to normal life, <laughs> uh -huh. they, they want to do, yeah. Okay. So well, thanks a lot for this interesting talk. We've got a lot of new background information now, and mm -hmm. I think we can see the film with other eyes now. <laughs> yeah, enjoy. It's uh, so nice to be part of it. Uh, I wish I could be there, but maybe yeah. next time, next yeah. film. Oh, hopefully next film. We're waiting for your next film. <laughs> yeah, let's see. So all the best. Thank stay you. Hey, take care. Stay healthy. And, uh, and dear audience, if you like this film, don't forget the audience award. Vote for it on the film page. Thank you very much for watching and see you at, at DocFest at Home 2020. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.